Okay, today we're looking at the Ford F-Series, the Chevrolet Silverado, and the Dodge Ram oil filters. There are some similarities among all three, along with differences, so let's just dive right into it. Okay, now before we begin, let's just quickly talk about the similarity, the differences among the filters, and then we will look at each filter on its own in terms of the construction, the end caps, the center tube, the anti-drain back valve, so on and so forth, okay? So very quickly, the three filters you see here will not fit every single pickup out there. In other words, the envelope is so large. You can have a pickup with a turbocharged engine versus a naturally aspirated engine. You can have a diesel engine versus a gasoline engine. The number of cylinders vary widely. But that being said, these filters do fit a large majority of the pickups out there. Nonetheless, I think you will still get a pretty good idea on the construction, the type of materials that they use, the engineering, and the value. What do you get for your money? So very quickly, every filter here is happily made in the USA. Regarding the price points, now this is based on Amazon, that's where I purchased these filters. The Ford by far is your cheapest filter at only $4. The amazing thing is they include a silicone anti-drain back valve. Now every filter does include this anti-drain back valve. It just depends if they're running nitrile rubber or silicone. And we'll talk more about that when we look at each filter on its own. The AC Delco here is $8. The Mopar filter is $9. Okay, so now let's talk about the oil type and how often to change the oil. Now again, I'm basing this on modern vehicles. Not your older 15-year-old pickup truck, but modern vehicles that use, as you know, these computer systems. In other words, essentially every vehicle out there, they have an oil change indicator system or indicating system. So in other words, based on temperature, how often you use the vehicle, engine revolution, so on and so forth, you will get a readout on the screen, on the dashboard. And it will say something like, please replace the oil soon. And typically within 600 miles, you want to get that done. So every modern truck uses that system. However, there are some slight differences. For example, with the Ford, if you're off-roading or live in sandy conditions with their gasoline engine, they recommend replacing the oil every 5,000 miles or six months. Otherwise, use this system and you really don't want to go beyond 10,000 miles or one year. And they do recommend fully synthetic motor oil. Now in my case, I was just looking at the 2019 F-150s. Again, check your owner's manual because every pickup is different. But at least that gives you a pretty decent idea on the modern F-150. Regarding the AC Delco, same deal, they do recommend fully synthetic motor oil and they use again a computer system however you never ever want to go over one year the Mopar depends on your vehicle in other words some vehicles they recommend every 6,000 miles or six months or up to 10,000 miles or one year the thing that's interesting with Mopar is they don't is explicitly state to use synthetic motor oil it's it's up to you you can run synthetic, just make sure it follows the correct weight and you replace the oil when you are supposed to, which is interesting because this filter also works with the challengers and the chargers, modern challenger and chargers. And with those vehicles, with this filter, they recommend fully synthetic motor oil. So it's sort of interesting to see that. So I think it's pretty cool just seeing the type of oil that they recommend, how often to change it. I sort of like that stuff. To me, it's interesting. But let's talk about each filter on its own regarding the construction We'll start with the shell or the canister and then move our way down. Now in terms of strength or burst pressure, the AC Delco here has the highest burst pressure at 400 PSI and an incredibly strong shell. For example, if we take a look at the weight and the thickness of each shell, the AC Delco is 28 thousandths of an inch and weighs 2.7 ounces. Compare that to the Mopar which is 22 thousandths of an inch and weighs 2.4 ounces. So the Mopar weighs less than the AC Delco and the Mopar is bigger. 3.625 inches in diameter versus three inches with the uh, AC Delco. But of course, because there's more material, it's thicker, this weighs more. 400 PSI, 300 PSI regarding the Mopar. The Ford Motocraft, the thickness is 21 thousandths of an inch and weighs 2.2 ounces. 
Now I could not dig up the burst pressure regarding the motorcraft. I'm assuming it's around 300 uh, and I'm not knocking these two by any means but uh, if you, in terms of thickness, just comparing what we have here, the AC Delco has a very, very thick canister. Now the next component happens to be this stamp piece of steel. We have a stamp piece of steel here. This is a relief valve that I'll talk about in a moment and a stamp piece of steel. Some filters you may find a coil spring, but they all have the same function and that's to keep all of the parts nice and tight inside the filter. But let's talk about this guy. This is a pressure relief valve. Two functions behind this valve. Number one, if the filter ever becomes clogged or under very, very cold conditions, this little valve opens up and unfiltered oil gets back in the engine. It's a safety device in a sense. Every filter has it. The only difference you'll, you'll find is the engineering, how they built it into the filter. So the, uh, with the AC Delco, it's built into the stamp piece of steel on top. Regarding the motorcraft and the Mopar, it's on the bottom of, I should say, right behind this plate. So right here, you can sort of see it. You have the relief valve, same location on the Mopar, okay? But again, they all had the same function. They may differ slightly on the PSI. In other words, once there's a certain PSI in the filter, then this little guy opens up. But that being said, every filter here does have it. Now let's also talk about this guy on the bottom. This is an anti-drain back valve. Now this is a silicone anti-drain back valve. Typically, you find silicone on your higher costing filters. In other words, $8 or more. To give you some examples, Wix XP, Amsoil, Royal Purple, Mobile One, so on and so forth. Your higher end filters. So the fact that Ford includes this at $4 is incredible value. Now the reason why this is advantageous versus nitrile rubber, which is what you find in your lower costing filters, is because this can withstand temperatures better over the long run. In other words, if I remember correctly, this can withstand down to minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. What happens over time with nitrile rubber, it starts to become brittle and it can break and crack, or I should say it could crack on you. And this is something I showed when we opened up one of these very basic I think it was called Prime Guard, and after 3,000 miles, that, that anti-drain back valve was incredibly stiff. It was nitrile rubber. So really nice thing to find with the Motocraft that they run silicone anti-drain back valves. The Mopar and the AC Delco, I do not know for sure what they're running. Typically, the manufacturer will brag. In other words, they will, they will uh, very happily tell you that they run a silicone anti-drain back valve on their marketing material. AC Delco Mopar, Mopar doesn't mention anything. If I had to take a guess, I would say that the AC Delco may be silicone, or most likely is, just because this can last up to 10,000 miles in one year. So when I did the muscle car filter, oil filter shootout, this, which happened to use the same exact filter, I was guessing, well, I don't know, they didn't mention that silicone, maybe it's, it's uh, enhanced rubber, so nitrile rubber. But the more I think about it, it probably is silicone, just because Again, one, one year or 10,000 miles, that's quite uh, a long length between oil changes. The Mopar, I'm thinking maybe it's nitrile rubber, just because on some vehicles they recommend to change this every uh, 6,000 miles or six months. But again, I cannot dig it up. I don't know for sure. I will keep on searching, and if anyone knows, please leave those comments, or once I find out, I will uh, list it in the description box below, okay? But let's start looking at each filter on its own. Now, every filter happily employs metal end caps and a metal center tube. And many of you do like to see that. And uh, you may be thinking, that's odd, or that's crazy in a sense. Every filter must be designed like that. But in fact, they're not. For example, this is a super tech filter. In other words, Walmart. 10,000 mile protection under $3 for many applications, but take a look, they run a nylon core as opposed to metal, and they use fiberboard end caps. AC Delco has a cheaper, I think it's called Professional Series, which looks incredibly similar to this. Fiberboard end caps, nylon core. Nylon is very strong. I know a lot of you don't like the nylon to, or to see nylon, uh, but nylon is actually quite strong. But nonetheless, we do have metal end caps and a metal center tube among all of the filters, okay? Now regarding filtration, 
and the microns and so forth. Let's start with the Ford. This has an 80% efficiency rating at above 20 microns. Now, what does that mean? The thickness of a human hair, typically around 70 to 100 microns, okay? So very, very small, we're talking about particles. And this can capture particles above 20 microns at an 80% success rate. If you do want to go above that, I know for a lot of applications, you can purchase a Ford Racing Filter, which has a fully synthetic media and 99% efficiency rating. This is not fully synthetic. This is a cellulose. Could be a blend, maybe a fiberglass as well. But nonetheless, that's what we have here. 80% efficiency above 20 microns. Again, $4 filter. Uh, you do get a lot for your money. Regarding the AC Delco, this has a 98% efficiency between 25 and 30 microns. Don't forget, this is twice the cost of the Mopar, of the Motocraft. But 98% efficiency between 25 and 30 microns. Regarding the Mopar, I could not dig it up. I could not find what the rating is on the Mopar. I do know it's cellulose and, and a blend of cellulose and fiberglass, but just could not find that rating. However, I did read some sources that this is manufactured by Purolator, and I don't know if that's true. And this is something I mentioned before in another video. This is just Purolator's their cheapest oil filter, not the Purolator 1 or the Purolator Boss, their cheapest filter. And look at the construction here. It's a beautifully made filter. This has a 96% efficiency rating. So if it is made by Purolator, we should be about the same ballpark, but I don't know if it is just because if you take a look at the spacing and the overspray and the gluing, to me it doesn't seem like this is made, let me get this back, made by Purolator. I could be wrong, but that's my feeling. I don't know if this is indeed made by Purolator, but I know a lot of you, uh, it seems like you know for sure that these are manufactured by Purolator. So if it is, and if the characteristics are the same in terms of the media, you figure around 96% it would be, 96% would be the efficiency. If you want to take a look at the AC Delco quite nicely in terms of the spacing, you do have some wide gaps here and there, but nonetheless, not a lot of overspray in the gluing. Again, 98% is a very good number. And look at the uh, Motocraft, very nicely made. Again, a $4 filter. You don't find a lot of overspray in the gluing. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can sort of see what we're going at here. And just to wrap this up, I'm not going to cut open the filters just yet. And that's because I need to use these filters for a few more videos. But once I am done with them, I will cut them open and I will measure the square inches in terms of the surface area. And I'll list the, those results in the description box below. Also, I think I did not mention this, but the, the function behind the anti-drain back valve is when you shut off the engine, this retains the oil inside the filter, so the next time you start your vehicle, you don't have a dry start. That's the whole function behind this. But that's really what we have here. So at least, I hope this at least gives you a fun idea on the differences among all of the manufacturers. And if you'd like to see anything else, please leave those comments. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.